Alrighty guys, welcome to part two of my low layer count buoy build. We'll pick up here right where we left off with forming this piece of Rardarn into usable pieces for my guard and front spacer. I start off by using my hydraulic press to reshape this one by one square bar. I've never worked with Rardarn before and I really think I may have moved it a little bit too aggressively based on some of the visual indicators in the green, but honestly, I'm not sure. That may just be how this stuff works. With the pieces ground flat, I used my 3990 mini mill from littlemachineshop.com to get them good and square. To do so, I employed a half inch roughing end mill and a carbide insert face mill. With the guard and front spacer stock square, I set them aside to start working a little more on the blade. Before finishing all my hand sanding, I wanted to get the clip ground in. This is a Kyle Royer tip, which will prevent the clip from getting washed out during the hand sanding process and keeps that line nice and crisp. I used an 8 inch contact wheel on my 2x72 belt grinder with the work rest table set at 59 degrees. Next up, we can start working on the shoulders and fitting the guard. I'm still working on my standard operating procedure for milling in these shoulders, so bear with me. In this case, I'm using a 3 16 of an inch carbide end mill, and note that it's pretty slow cutting since the blade has already been heat treated. I have to use a brand new end mill in order to make any progress at all. I'm relieving the sides of the Ricasso this time around, and ended up removing around 15 to 20 thousandths of an inch of material. In reality, this is too much material and I could have gotten away with 5 to 10 thousandths. This is probably the part of the knife that I dislike the most since it made the tang a little thinner than necessary. I later go back and blue back this area so that I can add some toughness and I performance test the blade once again. With the shoulders back cut and milled in, I head on over to the belt grinder to shape the rest of the tang and taper it. You want the tang to get progressively thicker towards the Ricasso to aid in guard fitting. I laid out my general slot targets and started milling in the slot to my guard. The end mill leaves round corners, so it is necessary to use a hand file to square these up. This file has also been ground safe so that it does not remove material on the sides of the slot. Once I have some square corners filed in, I can hammer the guard onto the Ricasso, see how far I make it up the tang, remove more material, then repeat the process until I can see a light impression of the Ricasso on the face of the guard. Using a small end mill, I removed some of the pocket on the face of the guard. I will continue to remove material with my rotary tool and microscope so that the guard fits up over the Ricasso. Vever recently sent me this microscope for review, and I gotta say, it's doing a really good job for this task. I haven't gotten this method down perfectly yet, but I do feel like I'm making progress with it. I'm thinking of branching out to a Nick Wheeler style guard fit up on my next build, just to continue my knife making learning. On the front spacer, I mill in the slot so that it has a step down to the actual tang thickness. This will ensure that I only need to file and fit about 80 thousandths of an inch of the front spacer thickness to the tang. With the front spacer centered up in my mill vise, I decided it was also a great time to drill in my 16th of an inch 
lineup pin holes. These holes will go all the way through the front spacer. Even though this knife will have a fully epoxied handle, I like having pins to assist with handle finishing and I'm sure they can't hurt for strength either. Back to the X-Tool laser, I cut out the template for my handle and for my guard. I'll be using this guard template on part three of this build series. I know I've said this a few times now, but this laser is really handy. I'll be using another one of the wood blocks I got from Oleg. He sells some phenomenal wood if you're in the market for handle material. This piece of stabilized ash with some purple in it really pops and I thought it was pretty cool. I squared up the face of the block with the mill and then used an extra long 3 16 of an inch end mill to start milling in a slot for my tank. Before I get the slot going all the way through the handle, I like to get my tang threaded so that I can see where it lands on the block. To thread the tang, I grind it down to the appropriate width on the belt grinder, round over to corners, and thread it by hand. I'm fairly sure I used an 832 thread for this build. I laid out the knife on the block of wood and marked out some lines where the finial will enter the block and then cut off the excess wood. Next up is making the finial itself. I'm going to be using my restored Atlas lathe for this work with its power feed. This is some 5 16 of an inch stainless steel rod that I'm turning down to a quarter inch shoulder. After that, I'll drill and tap it to match my threaded tang. With the finial fabricated and the tang threaded, I normally feel confident enough to lay out my target lines on the wood block and get to drilling. I connect a quarter inch hole to the slot on the front of the handle block, then counter bore this hole to 5 16 of an inch to accept the finial. Some measurement is required here in order to get the spacing correct between the shoulder and the threads. I put the finial into a collet block and then drilled a perpendicular hole into it. This hole will be used like a T-bar handle to give me leverage when assembling the handle. With the handle pieces all fit together, I apply some super glue to the wood block and front spacer. This allows me to use the holes in the front spacer as a drill guide as I drill into the wood for my lineup pins. At this point, I decided to bed up the handle so I can do some more performance testing. I'm not particularly good at bedding handles and really need some practice. I've been using 5-minute epoxy for my bedding jobs and I think I should move up to 15-minute epoxy. This process really can get a little dicey. I did make sure to wrap the tang with Teflon tape and applied petroleum jelly. Once I got it all bedded up, I removed some hardness from the tang with my torch, focusing on moving a straw color down the first third of my ricasso. All right, so I have the guard fitted, the front spacer fitted, I have the handle wood bedded, and then I have our finial on the back holding it all together, and the fit looks pretty good at this point. So before I go any further, what I would like to do is to performance test this knife again. As I may have already mentioned in a narration, 
There is some uh, thinning on the tang, which is a little thinner than I would have liked it to be when I milled in the shoulders. I took off maybe 15 or 25 thousandths where I really only needed to take off about 10 thousandths. So my tang's a little thinner than I like. I blued it all the way back or removed some hardness from the tang all the way back to the Ricasso and I bedded the tang so that I can do this test. I didn't really have to bed the tang on this knife. I could have just glued it all together uh, after I have everything shaped, but I wanted to be able to do one last performance test to really put some stress on this Ricasso area since the tang has been narrowed further than I would like. So I'm not gonna sharpen the blade. I'm just gonna bang it really hard on a piece of plywood for a couple of minutes just to make sure nothing catastrophic happens on the blade and then we can move on. So let's give it a go, wish me luck. Alright, so we survived the test. Nothing is bent or broke. Everything held up nice and tight. The fit's still good. The blade's still good. The tank's still good. So yeah, we're going to continue on with the build. Well, I think that's a good spot to conclude part two of this build. In the next build, I'll be finishing out all the handle components and making a sweet leather sheath with Stingray inlay for this knife. If y'all are liking this video series, please let me know in the comment section. Also, if you want to access the drawings for this knife, I will have them available for my patrons on Patreon. Until next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.